Hi, it's Marie from Marie Scrappy Creations, where we sew the scraps of your life into beautiful creations. Today is What's Up Wednesday, and I love to show you what I've been up to, and I've actually been really busy this week, because you know what? We've got a new grandbaby coming along. So if you figure that, along with my other sewing projects, I have been busy. I want to show you the baby quilt, and I know it's not a homemade quilt top, but it's a cheater quilt, but it goes with their nursery decor, and they really loved it, so we're going with that, and I want to show you the ruffle I'm putting on, and I would love some hints and tips, so if there's any quilters out there, I'm going to be asking for your comments and uh, thoughts when I show you that. I finished up the burp cloths from, that I showed you a week or two ago. <laughs> Not that those were like hard to finish, but I did finish those up and I'm going to show you those. Um, the big news this week is I was gifted two hardwood tailor's clappers. And if you don't know what those are, you definitely want to stick around. And even if you do know what they are, you might want to stick around anyway. Um, I asked my son if he could make me up one because I've seen so many different YouTubers and bloggers use them and they love them. And at first I thought I wouldn't use them. Well, I was wrong. I admit it, I was wrong. I love them. And he made me two, so thank you Jacob for making mom two of them, but I have a favorite already. They're both smooth as butter, they're both beautiful in their own way, as you guys will see. But there's one that I prefer because it's got a little bit more character than the other. And I always like things like that. So also on the horizon is the word of the day. So you got to stick around to get the word of the day to get a chance at winning. And speaking of winning, we're drawing the, the winner today. So the first Wednesday of every month, we'll be doing the drawing. So. If you're new, what happens is I give a, what's called a creative word of the day, and you use that word in the comments section below the video, and your name goes into the bowl to win something made by me that I mail to you at your home. So if you're interested in that and want to take part, you just stick around to hear the creative word of the day, use it in the comments section, I write your name down, and we're good to go. So we're going to do that drawing. But first, we're going to go over to the table and see what I've been up to this week. And I'm going to show you how to use the Taylor's clappers, as well as some ironing tips and hints while I'm at it. I hope you stick around, and I'm so glad that you dropped by. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you visiting me in my sewing room. So one of the first things that I want to show you is a product that I use a lot, which is sizing. And I'm sure it comes in different brands. This is just what my local store happens to carry. I use this a lot when I'm getting ready to make bags, quilts, anything where I want a really crisp seam. Because when you first buy a fabric before you've washed it, it, it has a certain finish to it. And what's in there is sizing. There's a certain amount of sizing put into the fabrics before you buy them. So they feel differently coming off the bolt versus after you've washed them. And that's what the sizing does. It gives you a little bit more uh, crispness to your fabric. It's easier to get uh, your points to meet, your seams to meet, if you're making a quilt block or, or whatever you're sewing. So I wanted to throw out a few hints and tips about ironing certain things and especially when working with scraps or small pieces to make bags, quilt blocks, whatever you happen to be making, placemats. Okay, so the first thing is you don't want to spray your sizing or your starch and immediately put your iron down. You want it to absorb for a few minutes. I'm going to show you what will happen if you spray see what we've got so you always want to let it sit for and it only takes a couple of seconds if you let that sit for just two or three seconds and absorb into the fabric it will not stick to your iron Okay, so that's the first thing that I wanted to show you as a hint 
for a tip. The second thing that I'd like to show you is I've got two exact same size squares here. Okay. Now, there is a difference, as I've said in one of my previous videos, between pressing and ironing. Okay. Now, if you're making a quilt block and it tells you to sew certain pieces together and then press, this is what you're going to do. You're just pressing. And probably you would have seams sewn, but it's generally still the same thing. Now, when you iron, you're doing this sort of thing. And it stretches your fabric out. It doesn't even keep it the same way because the fibers will move this way and that way. And especially if you're ironing in a circle, it's going to stretch out. So if you're going like this, and especially, oh, let's turn the steam up. Oh yeah, because that, I used to think that was a great idea to give it some steam, but it really isn't. Now see, already, I think you can see that, I've got a wider piece of fabric, but usually it does warp up the other way. Okay, so there was another hint. Okay, now I'm going to show you two pieces of fabric. And I'm going to show you my new Taylor's Clapper. I have seen these being used by other YouTubers and just on blogs. I've seen them being used for years. And I didn't think I would ever use one. I didn't really think that they would do much. <laughs> uh, my husband always did woodworking, has for years, and my son grew up watching, you know, his dad do this woodworking, and now he's doing it. And he works with hardwoods. And I mentioned to him a week or so ago that I would love to try one of these things. Could he whip me up one? Well, he whipped up two of them. Let me move these things out of the way and show you these because I'm pretty proud of these. Now, this one is made of ash and this one is made of poplar. So they're both fairly light. This one does have a little bit more weight to it, the one with ash, but it also has some beautiful grain in the wood and they feel so smooth they've got a little i guess you'd call it a divot here where your hand can hold now and i know you can see a knot but you know he's got that smooth right off and i love that because it's character and i keep that at the top i really like this so uh, i just want to say on air thank you to my son jacob for doing this i really love these and i have used them non-stop since you dropped them off so he does sell these if anyone's interested and i understand you can get these a lot of places uh he hand makes these here in northern maine and will ship them anywhere and if you are interested um in the description box there is a link to my email address as well as my Facebook group. And if you're not a member of our Facebook group, why don't you come over and join us? We're going to get a good group going there. We've got a good start. And um, if you go to Facebook page, the Facebook page, I have put the link to where you can get these clappers. So let me show you what they can do. That's, that's the best thing because I really wasn't a believer. I, well, I can't say I wasn't a believer. I saw people using them. I just didn't think that they were for me. Okay. All right. So let's pretend that we're going to sew a drawstring bag and we want to have a seam. And we're going to fold the, oops, I shouldn't have had the steam on. I'm sorry. I'm going to flatten that back out. I'll put steam on to flatten it out. We're going to start from here. Okay. We've got it all all flattened. I'll go from the other edge. All right. So we're going to fold that over because we're going to make a drawstring bag, let's say. And this is what I would normally do. I'd wiggle it back and forth a little bit and I'd come up with something that kind of looks like this. And as you can see, the seam doesn't stay over on its own. I, I can see where the line is, but it's just not over there very well. 
Okay, I'm going to get my clapper out, and I'm going to try not to burn myself on my iron, and I'm going to fold this one over. And I'm going to hold it, wiggle it just like I did on the other one. And this time, I'm going to hold the clapper on it for a couple of seconds, and I'm not really pushing down hard or anything like that. And look at the difference. You see it wants to lay. You can try to open it, but that is a crisp seam. And it also works. I was playing around with it the other day doing this sort of thing. And watch with steam what it does because it makes it's a whole new animal with steam because what happens is the wood absorbs the moisture from your seam, which sets it even firmer. So when I use steam, I hold the clapper on it a couple more seconds than what I might. And I don't know if you're supposed to move this back and forth. I've been doing that. But would you look at that? Look at that seam. It's almost like you've got sizing or starch or something holding that down there. It's, it's a real, look how firm that is. I really did not think that these were going to make that big of a difference in my sewing. But I'm a believer. So. That's part of why I wanted to show you guys the clapper because I'm, I'm just wowed. <laughs> okay, here goes another hint. We will be using the clapper again in a moment, but this is another ironing tip that I want to give you. I have two pieces of fabric sewn together, just two random scraps sewn together. I'm going to set my seam, and I do use just a little bit of steam for this. And I let it set there a minute. And they say to always uh, press towards the dark. I don't know. We're going to go towards the light blue because that's what's up top right now. Okay. So I hold that. And I take my clapper. And I hold it on there. Because I had a little bit of steam, remember. So that's one side. Personally, for most things, I like to press my seams open. I think they lie flatter. I like the results better. And there are some quilt blocks and some techniques, some things I make that it's not really that great to do that. But for the most part, I set my seams open or, or I press them open. And here's another important place where you definitely want to know the difference between pressing and ironing. Because if you were to iron this, okay, let's say, oh wow, yeah, that lays down nice. And I bet that clapper works even better if you do it from this side. What do you want to bet? Let's try that out. Uh, a lot of times you'll do these strips together and then cut them the other way when you're making scrap quilts or any number of things. Mm. Oh, wow, I love that. Yeah. See, that's not going anywhere. Anyway, sometimes you'll be cutting these, you know, in different widths. And you definitely don't want to do what I'm about to do. And that is to just go like this. Because I'll tell you what's going to happen when you do this is down here, you might have two and a quarter and two and a quarter, and up here, you've got uh, two and three eighths, and, and it's just different. And trust me when I say I have done that before. So the best hints I can give you is to lightly spray your fabric with the finishing spray, the sizing, before you cut it. You don't need to iron it really hard. You just put the sizing on, turn your steam off. Let that heat soak into the fabric and do its work. And you'll find that if you're doing even a simple nine patch quilt block will go together much nicer because you can feel the seams. It's more like folded paper than it is uh, fabric because it, it just really holds on to it really, really well. Let's try another one. I've got one here and we'll set the seam. We'll press to the dark. And a lot of them say to do this with your fingers. 
to press it open. I don't know if it really makes a difference if you do that first or not. I guess I'm up in the air on that one. So as I tell you on a lot of things, you do however you feel comfortable and whatever feels right to you. I'm going to use the other clapper this time. And I can feel the heat coming up the sides past my hand. I can feel the heat from the fabric down there. Oh, wow. That one, I know you can't feel it, but that one made quite a difference. I really haven't given this one a lot of use just simply because this one is so beautiful that I keep grabbing for it. <laughs> so that's what I've been using. All right. Another thing is... You want to use the tip of your iron when you go to uh, iron your seams open. You always just put that tip down there and follow with the rest. And I'm, I've barely got this part of the iron on. I've barely got the weight. I'm really just pushing the center. And then when I get all the way up, I lay the iron down in place. And then we're going to go back to Mr. Ash. Oh, my light is dying. Okay, I had to plug in a new light. All right, so there we have the other piece. So those are the ironing tips that I thought of to teach you about today. And if you were here last week, I had started making burp cloths for our new grandbaby, and I wanted to show you that I did finish those up. So we have these adorable little ones here, and the ducks with the yellow fleece back. And I'm not sure where the other one of these is, but I have two with the hearts and the pink fleece. So I was able to get those finished. And again, if you follow me on a regular basis, you know that I have been talking about a quilt that I am working on. I showed you all the cheater fabric I bought. Well, I know this looks like a hot mess, but this is quite a bit of work right here. So I didn't cut out around the border of the backing fabric. You can see that that's all still here with the little marks. Now that's one thing I am not crazy about. For what I paid for this fabric, I was not impressed that these uh, ink marks, all this writing was so close to where I need it to be cutting. So I cut on this piece, on the cheater quilt part, which if you go back uh, to What's Up Wednesdays, you'd be able to see that. But either way, uh, I cut about an eighth of an inch around from the edge. And then this one, I just, I pinned it to the backing. Okay, and then what I did is I had a yard of this pink fabric. I cut it five inches wide, sewed all the strips together, and then I sewed with a long basting stitch, one eighth of an inch away and one quarter inch away from the edge. I did it in sections, I gathered it last night, and just kind of pinned it around it. This is not where it's going to be, I, I do have to straighten it. But I wanted to make sure that there was enough to go around, and there is, where's the end here? I had a little bit, of course I grabbed the wrong side. I had a little bit left over, so I'm gonna go back, <clears throat> excuse me, and ruffle that around, and I have to fix all my threads, and I also have to put the batting in there. And that was another thing that I'm really wondering about. I love cotton batting. In fact, from the time I started using cotton batting inside of quilts, I really haven't used polyester, but I have a polyester high loft batting. Uh, this is the one I bought. And I actually bought it for a different use, but I got thinking I have it, and it's 45 by 60, but it says extra loft, and I I really don't know if I want to use it in this or not, or whether I should just stick with my cotton batting. So if any of you that quilt have an opinion on this, I would love to hear the why 
you would go one way or the other in the comments section and I would appreciate any feedback on what you might do because what I'm doing is I put right sides together of the front of the cheater quilt and the back fabric that matches I'm going to pin this ruffle I've got to put the batting on there and then I'm going to sew around leaving an opening and then flipping it right side out so that this ruffle is going to stick out the edge of the quilt because I thought that would be adorable. But I would take any feedback that anyone's offering and I would take that into consideration. Okay, so let me tell you about one more thing while we do this is the next thing we're going to do is draw the winner. So stick around. So I wanted to talk about some upcoming tutorials. I've had a few people comment or private message me, which I love, asking about certain things. Um, I actually had thought about doing a tutorial about this, this little wrist pin cushion that I made out of my scrap basket, oh, I don't know, probably four or five years ago. I needed something one day and I thought, I can make one of those. I'm not going to buy it. And so I did. And I've replaced the Velcro on this once, but it's still the original one I made other than that. I would like to do a tutorial on that coming up. And someone in the comments section, I'm sorry, I'm very forgetful on names, but she said, you know, did you make that? Or And I told her that, <laughs> she almost read my mind, I told her that I was going to do an, a tutorial coming up on that. And I'm not sure when I am going to do that, but I am going to do that. As well as we have a few more baby items that I'm going to make. I showed you the, the little fleece block on last week or the week before on What's Up Wednesday. Uh, we're going to do that. And I have at least one other baby item coming up. And the crazy block, I've had uh two or three viewers ask me the difference between a crazy block and just like a crumb block and i'm going to show that as well i need to make a few crazy blocks for an upcoming swap that i'm in for this month and that would give us a tutorial something i could show you guys um also something that has been asked the most frequently is do I sort colors, patterns? Do I sort my scraps by size? How do I get my scraps ready to use them? And I'm going to go over that as well as I'm going to do a new tutorial on sewing scraps together because when I made that one that's out there, that was like my first or second video. And not that I have a lot of clue about what I'm doing right now, but I've got a whole heck of a lot more than what I had at the beginning. So that being said, I want to give you the, the creative word of the day for today is iron because that's what we were talking about was ironing. So if you use the word iron in the comments below, your name goes into the bowl to win something. Now this is a once a month drawing and today is that once a month. So for last month, Linda Kinney won a set of paw holders. Now, I haven't announced what the winner is getting, but I have everyone's name in this bowl. And I'm going to draw a name, and whoever you are, I will comment on Facebook, or I will comment on YouTube, excuse me, uh, underneath something that you commented on, and I will let you know that you're a winner. So, here we go. Let's say, let's mix them up. And let's see who the winner is. I'm terrible at pronunciation. Nancy Tupin, Taupin. I'm sorry, I'm probably butchering the name. I will go to the comment where you left and I will let you know. If you see this, you could also contact me because in the description box down at the bottom, you will see my email address as well as a Facebook group. Speaking of the Facebook group, if you're not already a member, why don't you come join us? Some of you are starting to share the pictures, and I love seeing all the pictures. So, congratulations, Nancy. 
I'm going to need your address to get your prize out to you. And everybody else, leave your comments. Every video, I'm going to give you a creative word of the day. You use it in the comments below. Your name gets dropped in here. And maybe you can win next time. I love all the comments. I love all the viewers. When I get up in the morning and I read through the comments, seriously, you guys, it it really it really warms my heart because I work really hard to bring me these videos to you and it is a lot of work anyone who does it would tell you it's not just the sewing or the the time you spend doing that but there's hours behind the scene that no one knows about with the editing and then you have to export the video to your computer file and then you've got to upload it and you've got description boxes and tags and you know all the creators not just me all the creators put a lot of time and heart into what they do and they do it for you and we love to do it but the comments are what makes it worthwhile when you hear oh someone found you and they're devouring the videos that is a really nice feeling to know that someone enjoyed your company so for anyone new you'll find out that i started this channel with two things in mind number one was that I simply had a lot of scraps that I really want to use. And I've been making scrap quilts for years, but I wanted to do something different. I wanted to challenge myself to use as many of those scraps in as many different ways as I could. And then I thought about sharing that with all of you. Because anyone who sews has scraps, we all have them. You either have a little pile or you have a mountain and most likely you have a mountain. So, uh, there's that and what was my other thought oh yes number two the number two reason that I started this YouTube channel was to visit with you because I'm home a lot a lot <laughs> and I wanted to feel like I had friends coming into my sewing room so it's not quite so boring and I thought well maybe someone else does too so those are the two reasons why I started so I want to thank you all for joining me today for What's Up Wednesday and taking a peek at the baby stuff. And congratulations again to Nancy. The word of the day, remember, is iron. Use it in the comments. If you're not a member of our Facebook group, you can go check it out. Just go to Facebook and type in Marie's Scrappy Creations. And you do have to answer a question or two because I'm trying to keep all those scammers and all those people out. Okay, so until next time, take care, keep sewing, you know, keep getting into that scrap pile because I'm going to have something really fun for you on Sunday for a tutorial. So until then, take care. Bye-bye.